systems focused. All eyes are on the system checks that are happening across the board, and we're listening in as we close in on launch. And I can tell you that things are looking very good. Chris Cassidy will be watching from the International Space Station, right now flying over the Pacific Ocean. It's heading to cross right over the launch pad. We might even get some good views from the station. I uh, hope to be capturing those. We'll have the launch view and the big screen up front, and everyone's excited to see our two crew members on their way to the International Space Station. But before we get to it, I just want to pass on good luck from the entire flight operations community here in Houston. It's always exciting to be doing something wholly new and history-making with station operations, and we can't wait to see our team members Bob and Doug in low Earth orbit and heading to the International Space Station. That's it from us here in Mission Control Houston. I'll send it back over to the team in Hawthorne for the latest happening there. John. It's T minus 20 minutes, 30 seconds. We're Strong continuing the started. countdown. Everything is still looking good for launch of Falcon 9 and Dragon. 22 minutes, 45 seconds after the hour. Stage right two, now on the right hand side, you can see a large white cloud coming off of the Strongback. That is normal. As we get ready to load the second stage with liquid oxygen, we have to chill in the plumbing lines going up that strong back. And so as we relieve pressure, the moist, humid Florida air condenses around it, and that gives you the cloud. So that tells us that things are actually on schedule. We did begin propellant load at T-minus 35 minutes. Fuel loading on the second stage, I believe we just heard the call out that it is complete. First stage fuel load is continuing, and right now that's a little more than, uh, that's about 60% of the way full. So things are looking good. Second stage is getting ready to begin the liquid oxygen loading. After they finish chilling in the lines that you see on the monitor, they'll begin the load at T-minus 16 minutes and 30 seconds. The range right now is go, ready to support. Weather continues to be go. Uh, as we inch our way closer, uh, we're keeping our fingers crossed. Uh, we're waiting to uh, hear if anybody calls out an issue, but for the moment, as you can see on the screen, it looks good. Now, on the Dragon Tide, the Dragon Mission Director and the team there are reporting no issues. They've done their communications checkouts. The crew access arm, as you can see, is retracted away from the spacecraft. The crew is strapped in and they are ready to go. Now, final instructions will be going to the crew at T minus 10 minutes. The crew displays will be configured for launch, and that setup will give astronauts Bob Benkin and Doug Hurley insight into how the launch is proceeding and provides constant updates on vehicle health. We've already heard the crew give their go, close their visors, and get ready for launch. For Dragon, it'll enter terminal count at T minus five minutes. When it transitions to internal power, We'll hear continued callouts on the countdown net as we get close to zero and to liftoff. But right now at T minus 18 minutes, 15 seconds, everything continues to be go for an on-time launch. So Dan, Jesse, things are looking pretty good. How are they doing over at your stand? Things are great from about 15 feet away from you, John and I, and honestly, things are looking pretty great down at the pad there. We're seeing a lot more blue in the sky. Green is the color we want when we're talking about weather, and that's where we're sitting right now. So we're continuing to count down. We are under 18 minutes away from liftoff. Again, it's an instantaneous liftoff um, at, uh, it's going to be 12.22 and 45 seconds here on the West Coast, 3.22 and 45 seconds over on the East Coast there in Florida. Just a reminder, it's going to be about a nine-minute ride up to orbit for the Falcon 9 and Bob and Doug on board Dragon. It'll be a two-stage flight, so we'll see the first stage fly until we hear Miko, or main engine cut off, about two and a half minutes into flight. After that, the second stage will take over and continue to power them the rest of the way. Second engine cutoff comes in just under nine minutes at about eight minutes and 44 seconds. Following that second stage completing its job, it'll continue to coast for about three minutes. It'll do a, a slight attitude adjustment and null out any rate, so make sure it's not in any kind of a spin before they do separation. So that's when the Dragon spacecraft will physically separate from the Falcon 9 vehicle and Bob and Doug will be flying free. It's about a 19 hour ride if we launch today on time. So that means Bob and Doug will get on orbit. They'll have a number of burns or those firings of those Draco thrusters that they'll do over Stage two, several... locked load started. 
We hear the locks. The liquid oxygen load has now started on stage two. But again, they're going to be doing a series of burns on the way uphill towards the International Space Station 5 spread out over the, the first 16 hours or so of their flight until they get much closer and it's time uh, for that approach and docking. And we are expecting that with an on-time launch to happen today. Uh, that'll be coming tomorrow in the afternoon. All right. Now that we're under 16 minutes away, we have a special guest joining us. I'm going to toss it over to Jesse. We are T minus 15 minutes and 45 seconds from liftoff of our second demonstration mission today. And we have the honor of having SpaceX's president and COO, Gwen Shotwell, join us. Thanks, Gwen, for coming out and taking a few minutes to chat with us. Thanks, Jesse. <laughs> we know you've been on console. Um, how's the countdown been going so far in there? Countdown is clean today, just like it was Wednesday. Uh, we did clear the weather hurdles sooner mm -hmm. uh, than we did on Wednesday. And the only thing we're watching right now is downrange weather and lightning at the staging location. Of course. But we will <laughs> clear that hurdle at uh, T minus seven minutes. Awesome. Great. Very exciting. Um, now I'm going to throw it back to 2012 because you were on console for Dragon when it was first making its way to the space station. How does that experience compare to today? Two locks on the DPU. So, uh, I was nervous then. I stopped getting nervous for launches. Today I'm nervous again. <laughs> Super nervous. Stomach and throat. Understandable. Um, no, it's a fantastic fantastic day today. I'm really excited. The team is pulled together. It's such a professional operation. And when I say team, by the way, I mean SpaceX and NASA. This, uh, these folks have been working incredibly hard and have done an, a, a fantastic job. Yes, and we are all so excited. And we know that you have to get back into, inside of Mission Control, but is there anything that you wanted to say before liftoff to NASA and SpaceX? Well, I want to thank NASA, of course, uh, for their, uh, their generosity and their help with getting to this place. I want to thank all the SpaceXers who have come together uh, to make this moment uh, in history. And uh, I want to thank Elon for hiring me. <laughs> <laughs> we thank Elon for hiring you as well. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. We'll let you get back to Mission Control. Um, and good luck with launch today. Thanks, Jesse. And Godspeed, Bob and Doug. <laughs> Well, we are so excited. We are just a few minutes away from countdown. So we are going to turn it over to Dan and John for the mi final minutes in terminal count. Uh, take it away, John. T minus 13 minutes, 30 seconds, continuing to count down. We're continuing to load fuel onto the first stage. That should finish up in uh, just about six minutes. Fuel is completely loaded on the second stage. That's closed out. And we are continuing to load liquid oxygen on both the first and second stage. The liquid oxygen load beginning on the second stage uh, just uh, about three and a half minutes ago. We are also loading cryogenic helium into the storage vessels on the first and second stage, getting in the last little bits of helium when we keep it uh, cryogenic, cold and liquefied, that gets us, uh, just like we do with liquid oxygen, the maximum amount into the storage volume so that we can get the most performance out of the vehicle. Right now we are in a fairly quiet state on the vehicle. Ground pumps continuing to put the propellant in to first and second stages. Next significant issue callouts that we're going to hear will probably be inside the teen minus 10 minutes when uh, they talk to the crew. We'll listen for that, but at the moment, everything continuing to look good at T minus 12 minutes and 20 seconds. We're getting real close now, John. It's only a little over 12 minutes away. Just a reminder for everybody, it's about a nine minute ride uphill. We'll have some dueling boxes going on as that first stage is going to be coming home while the second stage is carrying Bob and Doug into orbit. So obviously, we'll be keeping an eye on our astronauts the whole way uphill. Some of the calls that you'll be hearing as there will be what we call performance calls over the Dragon to Ground the entire way uphill. And you'll just hear uh, some of the SpaceX engineers calling out uh, trajectories and booster a performance so we're always looking for that word nominal i know that's one of john's favorite words that's one of mine too we want to hear nominal as much as possible up on the way uphill 
You might also hear some number and letter combinations, and those correspond to the different abort zones that Bob and Doug are in during their flight uphill. There's one A and one B, which signify that they're on the first stage. Those carry them from there in the Cape all the way up to about the very top of North Carolina. And then we'll have 2A through 2E or 2 Echo. And that will be on the second stage. And that goes from North Carolina all the way up to about the tip of Newfoundland. Uh, so in the northern Atlantic. And then there is a zone of the northern Atlantic that we're going to avoid. And so you should hear the call out be something similar to forward to Shannon. And that just refers to Shannon, Ireland, which uh, they'll be going off the coast of Ireland at the later stages of the uh, second stage if they have to abort. So just prepping you now for some of those calls. You're hopefully going to hear that word nominal a whole lot on the way uphill. Ten and a half minutes. Things are pretty quiet. As John I said, it'll pick up at right at about ten minutes. We'll wait for the crew just to confirm that they're displays are in order. The crew is already strapped in and reported that they are go for launch and we'll continue to watch the fuel gauges tick up on the Falcon 9 vehicle until fueling cuts off at just about two minutes prior to launch. Dragon and SpaceX confirmed displays are configured for launch. SpaceX Dragon displays are configured for launch. Copy. Bob, Doug, on behalf of the entire SpaceX team, it's been a huge honor to help you get ready for today's historic mission. Know that we're with you, have an amazing flight, and enjoy those views of our beautiful planet. Thanks, Jay. Uh, it is absolutely our honor to be part of this uh, huge effort to get uh, the United States back in the launch business. Uh, we'll uh, talk to you from orbit. Thank you. Copy all. Thanks for those words. The SpaceX core. So again, that voice that's going to be talking to Bob and Doug throughout their mission from right here in Hawthorne, just offering a few quick words. The crew did confirm their crew displays are configured for launch. We are coming up on nine minutes and counting. We've gotten through T minus 10 minute with the crew discussions. Activity is now going to switch over to Falcon 9. Our next major event comes at T minus seven minutes. We begin what we call engine chill. Pre-valves will open. Those currently separate propellants uh, on the first stage from getting down to the Merlin engines will open the pre-valves. That'll allow fuel liquid oxygen to flow to the top of the pumps. And more importantly, when we open uh, the valves, that'll allow us to begin chilling the nine Merlin 1D turbo pumps on the first stage engine. It'll take a few minutes to get them cold enough to where they would then be ready to pass the large amounts of liquid oxygen through the pumps and into the main thrust chambers when we get to engine ignition at T minus two seconds. We don't want to try to run uh, highly chilled liquid oxygen through a warm pump. Uh, you would flash that into gas and running Starting gas through a high speed hydraulic. pump is not a good thing. So right now we are waiting for T minus seven minutes. That'll start the engine chill. Shortly after that, we will also get the fuel shut down. Listening to the SpaceX launch director in the background there. As I mentioned, at T-minus seven minutes as we start the chill, we will also get into the uh, final topping off of stage one fuel, and then the fuel load will complete. Stage one and stage two engine chill has started. We've heard the call out. Stage one engine chill has started. That's gone up to the crew so that they've got situational awareness. As I mentioned, the pre valves are open. And now we are topping off for stage fuel, getting ready to finish the fuel load. 
liquid oxygen load on first and second Engine stage pressure. will continue until the last three to two minutes of the countdown. We should hear that call out RP-1 load complete coming up at about six minutes. Again, RP-1 is just that densified kerosene or that rocket fuel that Falcon 9 is going to be used to power Bob and Doug to orbit today. And stage one fuel is closed out. Right on time. That call out indicates that the fuel loading on the first stage uh, is complete. Draining back the lines now, so first stage and second stage fuel are complete. Liquid oxygen loading is continuing on both stages. You can see on the view on the left side of the monitor, the condensation, uh, the cold gas wrapped around the stages as the tank skins are chilled by the densified liquid oxygen picking up the humidity Falcon from the Florida air. Line. Looks like at this moment we're a little more than 90% full on the oxidizer on the first stage, ticking up towards that 80% mark on the second stage. We'll be counting down all the way till about two or three minutes, as John and I just said, until everything is loaded. Falcon 9 heaters closing out. And then we will be go for launch. Dragon has transitioned to configure for terminal count. Vehicle tanks pressing for strong back retract. We're pressurizing the Falcon 9 tanks. We're going to open the clamp arm around the second stage and begin to retract the strong back. We'll move back about two degrees. That'll get us to the liftoff position. At liftoff, the strong back will then recline about 45 strong degrees away. Started. Stage two, RP1 bleed. Launch director called out the strong back retract has started on the left. You'll see it go back just a couple of degrees. Stage one, RP1 bleed. We are just four minutes away from liftoff. Again, at this moment, Bob and Doug are really just laser focused on those displays. They have insight directly into Dragon and the Falcon 9. They're able to see where their fuel loading is at, how everything's progressing down with the count. AFTS final setup started. Three and a half minutes from launch. And the strong back is now reclining away from the Falcon 9. And back igniter purges. I'll go bleed. Dragon has transitioned to terminal count and is on internal power. Stage one, locks load close out. Okay, we're at T minus two minutes, 42 seconds. Stage one, locks load is closed out. Stage two will continue to load for about another half a minute or so. Once we get the completion of stage two locks loading, we have to vent down the line so you'll see another large white cloud coming off of the strong back. That'll be normal. That'll happen around transitioning to T minus power. one minute and 40 seconds. We're going on internal power now. Just a few seconds away from the stage two locks load being complete. It's been almost nine years since we've been in this position. A lot of work done by thousands of people to get to this point. All our eyes focused on two now. Stage two, lock load is closed out. Propound fills are complete. Dragon is in auto idle. Stage two locks load complete. 
All fuel, all oxidizer on Falcon 9. One minute, 34 seconds to go till launch. Ground gas closeouts is starting. Falcon 9 is in startup. Dragon is in countdown. FTS is armed for launch. Under a minute now, the FTS, the flight termination system, has been armed. Dragon, SpaceX, go for launch. SpaceX, Dragon, we're go for launch. Let's light this candle. T minus 30 seconds. Stage one tanks pressing for flight. T minus 15 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Zero. Ignition. Lift off of the Falcon 9 and Crew Dragon. Go NASA. Go SpaceX. Godspeed. Bob and Doug. America has launched. So rises a new era of American space flight, and with it the ambitions of a new generation continuing the dream. 20 seconds into flight, stage one propulsion is nominal. plus 30 seconds into this historic mission. Flying crew on board Dragon and Falcon 9 and look at them go. Falcon power telemetry nominal. M1D throttle down. We're throttling down to get ready for the period of maximum dynamic pressure. We're in the throttle bucket. Reports say all systems are go. Vehicle is supersonic. We've exceeded Mach 1 on the Falcon 9. M1D throttle up. We're throttling back up to full power as we're through one Max Q. Copy, one Bravo. And we heard that one Bravo call out. That's just the second aboard zone that they're in. They'll continue to be on this until the first stage has done its job and they switch over to the second. At this point, Bob and Doug pulling about 2.3 Gs, 2.3 times the Earth's gravity, already moving at over 1,500 miles per hour. We've heard the call out for MVAC engine chill. That's getting the MVAC engine ready to light. That'll come at about 2.44 into flight. Right now, everything continuing to look good. Next major event coming up is going to be the triple We'll have main engine cutoff of the nine first stage engines, stage separation, and then ignition of the second stage engine to continue to carry astronauts into orbit. Coming up in about 20 seconds. M M1D throttle down. We heard we're throttling down the Merlin engines on the first stage. And we have Miko. Miko. Two Alpha. Falcon stage separation confirmed. Copy two Alpha. M back ignition. All right, we have stage separation confirmed. The first stage beginning its flight back. The second stage being powered by that single Merlin 1D vacuum engine has ignited and is now carrying Bob and Doug into orbit. So they're going to continue under the power of this second stage. Stage two propulsion is nominal. 
which will cut off at Seco or second engine cut off at about eight minutes and 44 seconds into today's flight. So a little over five minutes to go still on this second stage. You heard the call out to Alpha, so they're now in the longest abort zone that carries them all the way from about North Carolina up the eastern seaboard almost to Canada. Things looking good, though, getting good call outs, nominal propul pul propulsion on that second stage. Bob and Doug continuing to make their way into orbit. Dragon SpaceX, nominal trajectory. Acquisition of signal in Bermuda. SpaceX Dragon, nominal trajectory. All right, here in nominal trajectory, so Dragon pointed in the right direction, continuing to make their flight uphill. Heard acquisition of signal Bermuda. That's one of the other ground stations that they're using to get telemetry and data back from this spacecraft. Stage two propulsion is still nominal. little over four minutes, 40 seconds into the flight. Bob and Doug flying at more than 5,600 miles Dragon per SpaceX hour. Dragon SpaceX, nominal trajectory. Already almost 200 miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center. Nominal trajectory continuing. And while they continue uphill, it looks like we are getting a view of the first stage as well. Yep, on your right screen, you can see that first stage with the grid fins deployed. It's making its way back to attempt to land on our drone ship. Of course, I still love you today. And we're just about a minute, uh, a couple minutes away from the entry burn, and that's where three of the nine Merlin engines do ignite to help slow the vehicle down as it re-enters back into the Earth's atmosphere. And then after the entry burn will be the landing burn, which is just a single engine Dragon, burn. SpaceX, nominal trajectory. And you heard... Nominal Starting trajectory. chill for entry burn. There's that call out. They are still on a nominal trajectory on Dragon. Still on second stage. And that's that MVAC engine on second stage on your left screen. Again, on your right screen is that first stage booster coming back towards our drone ship. Of course, I still love you. We're about a minute away from entry burn. Meanwhile, that second stage continuing to power Dragon into orbit. Again, if you're keeping an eye on that timer, that's going to continue to burn until 8 minutes and 44 seconds into flight. So a little over two minutes from now, we'll hear the call out Seco. It'll then be a little stage under. Stage two propulsion little is still over. good a little over three minutes until Dragon physically separates from the second stage of the Falcon 9 after the upper Dragon stage SpaceX, gets a chance. Dragon SpaceX, nominal trajectory. Dragon copies, nominal trajectory. Continuing to check in with Bob and Doug as they are on a nominal trajectory. Just about 10 seconds away from that first stage, starting that entry burn on your right screen. We should be able to see that view live. Stage one entry burn startup. And there is that entry burn that beginning. This burn lasts about 36 seconds long. Stage two FTS is saved. Well, that entry burn continues. We're just about a minute away from Seco. We'll have a number of events all happen in rapid succession. Uh, it'll Talking be the shutdown. second engine cutoff. Stage one we'll be looking for down. that uh, stage one landing burn shortly after. Yeah, actually, just within a few seconds of each other. It's such a cool view on your left screen, seeing Bob and Doug on Dragon. Right now you can see the displays that they are seeing right now themselves. Terminal guidance. 
And back throttle step. We are coming up 25 seconds or so away from Seco or second engine cutoff. This is also the point where Bob and Doug are experiencing their highest G-force. We're seeing the counter tick up to right about 1.8. Copy, Shannon. You heard Shannon, so that just means they're in their final abort zones. If they were to abort at this point, would either be in abort to orbit or to land off the coast of Ireland. Standing by for second one line cutoff started. confirmation. And back throttle step. And back shut down. Stage one landing winner. Confirmation of Seco's second engine cutoff. Now we are waiting for our first stage to make its way to our drone ship. Of course, I still love Dragon, you. Dragon, SpaceX, nominal orbital insertion. Launch escape confirmation system is nominal orbital Dragon insertion. Copies. Nominal Stage orbital one insertion. And what you're seeing on your screen is a live view of our drone ship, where our first stage will be coming down. Looks like we lost that live view, but we'll wait for confirmation of that landing shortly here. Falcon 9 first stage has successfully landed. And the there you can see on your screen, Falcon 9 has landed. This is the first Falcon 9 to carry humans to orbit, so very exciting for us. And as you can see on your right screen, Bob and Doug are still making their way to their targeted orbit. <laughs> M1D to recovery one. So exciting today. M1D. <laughs> It doesn't stop. It does not stop. All right, we did We did hear again that call out, good orbital insertion, so that means Falcon 9 and Dragon right now exactly where they're supposed to be. Can we need an FRC on recovery one? And it's right at about 12 minutes when Can Dragon will separate. Looks like we saw a zero G indicator floating around there. I know Bob and Doug owe us a little bit about what exactly that is that they brought up with them. <laughs> And before separation, before Dragon initiates separation from the second stage, they do make sure to make, they, they do ensure that the vehicle is not spinning and it is in good con condition before we separate. That's right, the upper stage does small attitude maneuver using some cold gas thrusters built into the rocket body itself. Exactly, so we do expect that separation to occur in about a minute from now, but they do wait until they have full confirmation that it is ready to separate. Such cool views. I cannot get over this view that we are seeing right now. Bob and Doug on the right screen, inside of Crew Dragon, out in space. Yeah, already 200 kilometers over planet Earth, or a little over 124 miles, traveling in excess of 2,700 meters. 27,000 meters per second, or about 16,000 miles per hour. So again, we're just standing by. That separation event should be coming up shortly. Then they'll begin a series of checks on the Draco thrusters that are going to be used to maneuver and then power Dragon on its flight to the International Space Station. Standing by for separation. Expected loss of signal, wallops. It sounds like we had an expected LOS loss of signal with one of the ground stations. Waiting for confirmation now of that. Dragon up. separation confirmed. Dragon separation and confirmed. <laughs> there is a great view right in front of you Compound of Dragon separating. Separation confirmed. And there's that call out. Dragon is now officially making its way to the International Space Station today. <laughs> Dragon SpaceX with that separation call. Uh, we have a few words for you from our Falcon 19. Standing by. Dragon, Chief Engineer on Dragon to Ground. Bob Doug, on behalf of the entire launch team, thanks for flying with Falcon 9 today. We hope you enjoyed the ride and wish you a great mission. Thanks, Bala. Congratulations to you and the F9 team for the first uh, human ride for Falcon 9, and it was incredible. Uh, appreciate all the hard work, and uh, thanks for the great uh, ride to space. Copy all. Oh, Good luck. Like 
proud of you guys and the rest of the team. Uh, thank you so much for what you've uh, done for us today, putting America back into low Earth orbit from the Florida coast. Got the L. Good luck. Godspeed. All right, so Bob and Doug are in and Dragon space. Dragon SpaceX, we confirm nominal ECLOS activation and service section Draco checkouts. Uh, no scone deploys in progress. Copy all. We're monitoring. The core here in Hawthorne giving the crew a heads up that we have confirmation the nose cone is deploying. So again, that nose cone is going to open up a little bit more than 90 degrees, goes up to about, I think, 105 degrees, and that's going to expose uh, the actual docking ring and the hatch that they're going to be going through once they attach to the International Space Station. And also four of those Draco thrusters, we call them the forward bulkhead thrusters, that are going to be used for these major phase burns or firings of those thrusters to actually raise their orbit gradually over the coming hours. Also heard good activation of the ECLIS, that's the Environmental Control and Life Support System. That's everything controlling their atmosphere, uh, just keeping Dragon a nice, safe, habitable environment where they're going to be living for the next 19 hours until they arrive at the space station. Right, exactly. And Falcon 9's job may be done for today, but the mission is not over. Crew Dragon's job is not done. As you can see, Bob and Doug are still inside Crew Dragon making their way. It will be a 19-hour trip to the International Space Station before they dock tomorrow morning. And such cool views. I love that we can get these live views here and see and watch what they're doing now that they are in orbit. Yeah, it's, it's incredible to just be looking over their shoulder to be along for the ride. And we're going to be with them, and we're going to be with all of you the entire way uh, for their journey to the space station. We're going to be covering live throughout. Uh, Bob and Doug will obviously have a sleep period uh, where they'll get about eight hours of sleep a little bit later today before they wake up for all of their final approach. Uh, one of the major things we are looking forward to in the next couple of hours is going to be their first turn at the controls. So they're actually going to be using those touchscreen displays to take control and manually pilot Dragon. We'll walk you through what that's going to look like, and assuming we have some good ground station coverage, we'll be able to get views from right inside Dragon, looking over their shoulder as they manipulate the controls at the display. But, I mean, it, we had a, a smooth ride uphill, both stages of the Falcon 9 doing their job, placing Bob and Doug in orbit. I mean, this is, this is a day, this is a historical day. This is us kicking off that new era of space flight that we've all been talking about and longing for since the space shuttle program came to an end in 2011. Yes. And the weather, the weather cooperated. Yes. Second time's a charm. <laughs> right. All right, so day for the history book, books. As you can see, we have lost some live signal there, but the mission still continues, and we're going to send it over to KSC um, to continue uh, broadcasting live Expected with you. Expected loss of signal in Newfoundland. Yeah, Jesse and Dan, we are just in awe over here. When I woke up this morning and looked at the weather forecast, I was like, Man, we're going to be back here on Sunday, but we we did it, we did and it. the room cleared out. Everybody was outside watching, and the and the inside the lights were shaking, the cameras were shaking. Lauren came back in with tears in her eyes. <laughs> uh, this is really amazing. I, I I can't believe it. I saw it <laughs> with my own eyes. This is I, I'm a little bit speechless. Um, just so grateful that we got them up there and there's a lot more to go a lot more to go but i'm so happy they're safe right now i'm just so happy yeah leland you were talking <sighs> about it it's amazing what we can do when we work together yes american astronauts on an american rocket from american soil showing you what americans can do when we come together as a team and blast doug and and bob off to the cosmos this is this is what it's all about and their families and everyone is working together to uh, to take them up to space safely. So I'm, I don't know what to say. I'm, that rocket fuel <laughs> is still in my in my veins, and uh, I want to go get on the rocket. <laughs> well, it's, it's it's too late now. Maybe I the know. next one. I know. But Thank we want to go over to uh, Daryl at OSB2. The, he's there with the administrator, who um, hopefully has more words than we do, because we're still kind of speechless. Daryl. Yeah. 
Pretty incredible here, Marie, at the Operations Support Building where a chorus of applause has been happening from the beginning of launch and throughout the various stages. Some very special guests were here to watch it. That includes President Donald Trump, Vice President Mike Pence, and NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstine, who joins me now. And you were with the President and the Vice President. Um, America's back, launching human astronauts again. Tell me how you feel about that, and tell me about the president watching the launch and what happened there. So this has been a long time coming. Um, it's been nine years since we've launched American astronauts on American rockets from American soil, and now it's done. <laughs> we have done it. It's been way too long. I want to give a lot of credit to Charlie Bolden. He was my predecessor as the NASA administrator. Uh, he fought hard for this program at a time when it didn't get any, any support in Congress. Uh, we now have an administration that is fully supportive of, of our spaceflight initiatives, not just on the exploration, discovery, going to the moon, onto Mars, but also from a Space Force perspective. Our budgets are going up, things are strong, and today was just, uh, it was an, uh, uh, just an amazing day. You know, one of the things the president did right out of the gate when he became president is he created what's called the National Space Council. And he put the vice president as chairman of the National Space Council. And on that National Space Council, you've got the Secretary of Defense and the Secretary of State and the Secretary of Commerce, the Secretary of Transportation, the Secretary of Education. Um, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs, all of these different um, amazing individuals that deal with space day in and day out. A lot of people don't realize how many parts of the federal government deal with space. And the vice president invited those members of the National Space Council here as well. So um, we, we just had, and then we had members of Congress, bipartisan members of Congress, Republicans and Democrats who have been involved in supporting this program. Um, you know, for, for a long time now. So um, I'll just tell you, I, I, I'm breathing a sigh of relief, but I will also tell you I am not going to celebrate until Bob and Doug are home safely. Um, tomorrow they're going to dock to the International Space Station. Tonight I'm heading to Houston to be at the, the Johnson Space Center uh, when that happens. So um, it is, it is a, bit, it's a bit of a relief. The, the nose cone is now open. Um, it's now deployed, uh, which means that, um, you know, now we're going to go into some, some burns. We're going to have some phasing burns. We're going to have some, um, some, you know, boosting burns, and we're going to get uh, as much as we can in alignment with the International Space Station um, as early as possible here. But also, um, I know it's hard, but, you know, the big thing that we need to do now is <laughs> we've got to get Bob and Doug, who have now gone through this exercise twice, they need to get some rest. Um, but I, I can guarantee you there will be no rest for a good, a good amount of time while they're up there in orbit. And they are certainly on their way. And a lot of people joining us for this entire celebration and watching it. We just heard uh, 10 million people watching live as this launch happened. And President Donald Trump becoming the third sitting president to watch a launch live from the Kennedy Space Center. The first. Well, to be clear, the, I think he's the only sitting president to watch American astronauts launch on a brand new rocket that has never launched before. Uh, and uh, that's a big risk. You know, he also said we're going to go to the moon by 2024. That means he's, <laughs> he's putting himself at risk to say, look, I'm going to be accountable, potentially, I'm going to be accountable to the, the initiatives that I put forward. And I think that's, we have not had that kind of leadership for space in a very, very long time. And, uh, and we're, we're so grateful for it. What was it like watching the launch with the president, how did he react? Oh, I, I'll tell you, um, it's obviously something that um, is near and dear to him. He said it a year and a half ago, he put it in the State of the Union speech. He said, we're going to launch American mm -hmm. astronauts on American rockets from American soil. And of course, I was like, in my, in my head, I'm thinking, we better get, we better get after this. <laughs> um, and uh, of course, we've had, we, we've worked overtime to, to, to make it happen. Um, we might be a little behind schedule, <laughs> but we got it done, and we got it done safely we're knocking on wood um but um but so far so good it's looking good you personally jim as that rocket was lifting off and you felt that rumble yeah uh, what'd you feel what'd you experience well i was praying <laughs> i'm not gonna lie to you i was praying i was praying for bob and doug i was praying for their families i was praying for their safe return even though they're just going um but man i'll tell you it was uh i've heard that rumble before but it's a whole different feeling when you've got your own team on that rocket and uh, and they are our team they are America's team 
This is Launch America. This is everything that America has to offer in its purest form. And times are tough right now. There, there is no doubt. Um, we've got the coronavirus pandemic. We have other challenges as a country. But I hope this moment in time is an opportunity for everybody to reflect on humanity and what we can do when we work together, when we, when we strive, and when we achieve. And if this can inspire a young child to become the next Elon Musk or the next Jeff Bezos or the next Sir Richard Branson, uh, then that's what this is all about. Or the next Jim Bridenstine. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I wouldn't put me in that category. but. Well, we appreciate your leadership for the Space Agency at this time. And congratulations on Thank an amazing you. day and the launch. Thank you. It's been a, a great ride. All right. Very good. Marie, we'll send it back to you in the studio. Doug and Bob are on course to arrive at the International Space Station tomorrow, May 31st, at 10.27 a.m. Eastern Time. And we'll be staying on the air for continuous live coverage along the entire ride to the station. So though our coverage here is concluding, we will turn it over to the teams in Hawthorne and Houston to take us through the next phases of the Demo-2 mission, all the way through hatch opening and a welcome ceremony on the space station for Bob and Doug tomorrow. That's right. And as you follow along, we invite you to tune into a post-launch news conference that's happening here at 6.30 this evening, Eastern Time on NASA TV. We'll have NASA and SpaceX leaders here to take questions live on this unprecedented achievement in human spaceflight. And in addition to NASA TV, you can follow along always on Twitter at, at NASA and NASA.gov for mission updates as it progresses. Here now are highlights from the mission so far May 30th, 2020, remember this day, you'll, you'll have this memory forever, the day America returned astronauts to orbit from U.S. soil. Wow, we're making history again. Let's go. Yeah.